Okay, I'm going to try something a little different. Today I just want to share with you some of my reflections on something I've been thinking about in the last couple of days. So I've been rereading this awesome book right here, Where Mathematics Comes From, by Rafael Nunoz and uh, George Lakoff. It's a great book because it introduces cognitive science to the study of mathematical thought. And I've read this book before, but as I was reading it this weekend, I was reflecting on the importance of bridging the gap between three areas, specific knowledge bases like mathematics or physics or chemistry or what have you, um, the field of cognitive science, which is looking at large scale be or looking at um, human behavior in the mind, and then uh, the realm of philosophy, which is the uh, assumptions we have about how things work and about what is knowable and what is real and what's good and what's bad and so on. And um, since I've been reading this book again, I've realized that one of the more important things that cognitive science can bring to other disciplines is what uh, George Lakoff and Mark Johnson uh, call empirically responsible philosophy. Now, empirically responsible philosophy is simply uh, recognizing that our assumptions about philosophical topics can be skewed or biased by our worldviews and by our value systems, and so we can actually have blind spots, very significant blind spots, about the world. And so it's possible to develop very elaborate philosophical arguments that are really untrue at a very foundational level, make an assumption about the human mind that has been invalidated by research in brain science, for example. And uh, what's needed to uh, remedy this problem when it arises is to have a really strong understanding of what cognitive science is telling us about human nature and about the mind, about language and thought, so that when we uh, articulate a philosophical argument, we can determine whether or not it's empirically responsible. Are we being responsible with our understandings of where our philosophies come from, whether or not they're correct, and if we're making assumptions about human beings that fly in the face of what science has told us about what it means to be human? Now, I think this is something that's especially important when you look at um, the application of philosophy to economics, where we have different theories about rational action and economic behavior, and the theories are basically ad hoc assumptions, have no basis in reality. Uh, they were formulated oftentimes by mathematicians or by people who don't know much of anything about real human behavior. And so the theories can stand for decades in some cases without ever being tested uh, relative to what is known in psychology and brain research and anthropological research and, and other fields that could guide us more effectively. So when we need to solve big problems, like building a sustainable global economy, we don't want to just have philosophies that are ad hoc. We want to have ways of systematically determining whether what we're doing is in the right ballpark or if we're completely off our rocker. It turns out cognitive science can help us to do that. So I've been advocating for a number of years now that cognitive science should be taught and should be employed as part of our work in um, developing philosophies for society and for building our social policies so that we can be more effective at solving real-world problems. I'd love to know what you think about this.